So how's your week going this week in trucking? Well, how's your week going at all? I was going to say, I really don't, I, don't, I don't drive truck anymore, so, you know. I did drive your truck this week. Oh, yeah. My Honda. <laughs> yeah. Woo-woo. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what's going on with you this week? Anything special? No. No, nothing special. I no. had a, I had a migraine all week. You know. I had a crappy week. I, I was thinking about that migraine. I never seen anybody with a migraine for five days like that, but... Mm-hmm. Can you imagine being a trucker and having a five-day migraine? It would. Uh, I I can actually sympathize and say that would really suck. Yeah, it's got to be insane. You know, it kind of goes with my list of. I kind of have a topic this week. Um, how dangerous is trucking? You know. Well, it's highly dangerous. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, literally, check this out. I I I, uh, I read a couple thingies. Ooh. <laughs> Thingies. Thingies. Wow. No, no, I mean, no, I'm going to tell you this, honestly. You know what the average lifespan of the um, average American, I'm talking male, female combined, you know, women, of course, live a little longer, but the, okay. what do you think, now it has come down, so what do you think the average, I'm not talking about truckers, I'm talking about just everybody, what do you think the average lifespan is right now? Okay, so, um, well, first, thingies are meaning statistics? Yeah, I mean, I'm okay. okay. Um, average lifespan of a human. Yes. Um, Americans. I'm going to say 87. No. It actually was in the 80s, but it's come down. It's 76.4. That's from but, vaping. Um, well, it may be from trucking because the average trucker, are you ready for this number? I'm serious. This is a national statistic. The average truck driver, his life expectancy is 61 years of age. Wow. Six, almost 16 years less than the average American. Now, we're talking about this was a, st- a study for America. Because, you know, different countries, they're like an island where people live to like 500 or something like that. They're Oh, it's like 110 or something. Yeah, but, the real healthy people. Yeah. but They don't but, have fast food there. They No, they don't. <laughs> But as far as Americans go, the average American is 76.4. Right now it's come down probably because of the pandemic, but 61. That's all the average trucker. That's horrible. Well, you know what? I'll give you a little bit. Um, Years and years and years ago, I was talking to my mom. Mm -hmm. And at that time, mom worked in a nursing home. And she said there was a truck driver, a retired truck driver that was there that she was taking care of. And she said that all of, you know, like so many of his organs were so failing. And they had said that it was because of sitting in his, his tractor so long and the bouncing. And I guess, you know, with the, at that time with the age and stuff, he might not have had air ride seats or whatever. But, you know, his kidneys were all like totally destroyed from holding everything in and not going to the bathroom like he should have. And of course not eating right. And, um, they said his spine was all messed up because of like all the bouncing and stuff. And then also, you know, he had hemorrhoids really bad or something, you know, just, just his whole body was just failing just from sitting continually in the seat. You know, on my list today, I literally never thought of the holding your bladder how that would affect, and I guarantee you there's a lot of truckers that, you know, have to hold their bladder or pull, you know, pull over on a rest area. I'll tell you, though, there's videos of guys going down the road with a empty water bottle just, you know, using it as a trucker bomb and, and uh, urinating into the bottle while they're going, to, you know, going down the road. And I would personally, I would suggest that they actually have um, uh, things that, uh, that are built for, being able to do that while you're driving, I would suggest having something like that on hand and just in case you can't pull over. Yeah, like a portable, you know. Well, I would say that they wouldn't want to. I mean, think about it. How, when when I want to make a quick stop, I'm like, oh, babe, let's just stop real here quick. And you're like, but, you know, all right, it's going to take us 20 minutes just to pull off, get what you want and get back on the road. Is it really worth it right now? Can you wait? Yeah. And, and think about it. If a guy's you know, you're strict on your, your hours of service, right? You know, you only have so much more hours to go and you want to get past 
this city Mm -hmm. so you don't get stuck in it. So you want to drive through it. So you're holding your pee in for as long as you possibly can just so that you can get out of that city and then take your break because you know it's going to, if you don't, you're going to lose your hours and you're going to get stuck inside the city or within the hour or within the the limits of having to get stuck in traffic that you don't want to be in first thing in the morning. You know, I hear that um, holding your pee in it can cause kidney stones. I don't know. They. I don't know the, that they actually know bladder bladder infections. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. I wonder what the percentage of truckers are that have that get bladder infections, stuff like that. Because you know, honestly, that is one of the pitfalls of driving a truck. So I wrote a list down. R and uh, just a little list says you know from the dangers of day to day operations of being a truck driver to health issues puts truckers in a low life expectancy than the average American. 61 years of age is the study. Y'all can look it up. Make sure you check my information. I always encourage people, Ruthann, go ahead and check the information that we're giving you. But 61 years of age is the average truck. That's horrible. That's horrible numbers. And so we got a, a few things we'd like to talk about here, but like, let's discuss the health problem first, Ruthann. Okay. So, so sitting for long hours on end, exposure to, this is a, uh, an article I read, wrote, uh, exposure to various pollutants and elements, countless hours of being, you know, alone, which can result in heart disease, um, hemorrhoids, uh, many times bleeding hemorrhoids, um, high blood sugar problems, high blood pressure problems, back problems. And I've met a lot of truck drivers, Ruthann, that have like really a lot of back problems, um, poor circulation problems, and depression, believe it or not. Being out there all by themselves and alone, there was a study uh, they had done a while ago where the average trucker, if he goes to a truck stop, he just sits there, doesn't really talk to anybody. Nobody talks to him. He don't talk to anybody. So they kind of get a little depressed out there. What do you think of those things? I can definitely see every one of those things and more, of course, uh, being an issue with a driver that that especially, you know, maybe, maybe I, I wouldn't I, see. I would have thought it would be more years ago those statistics. I wouldn't think of it being now with the phone and FaceTiming, and so I'm actually really stunned. Well, I think you know. Let's put it this way: you're out there, you're driving a truck. You can FaceTime somebody. You can say hi, how you doing? But you know what? You're not there with them. Yeah, you know I mean, you're not. You know, you can say hi to your kids all you want, but your kids want to jump in your arms and hug you. Your wife. You know, most wives want to, you know, have their husband in bed, you know, someone to cuddle up with every night. So even though you've got the phone and the long distance relationship, there's a point where it's like, you know, what, screw this, this telecommunications crap. I need to have my family in my arms. And I think that's really where truck drivers get depressed more than anything. They're just, it's like, okay, I know I'm going to see you, but I'm 1,500 miles away. Man, I wish I was there. And man, it's going to take me days to get home and blah, 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 blah. I think that's where it's at. Mm. Yeah. So, so that's the health problems. And so, you know, honestly and truly, you know, that's a, 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 a really a, a great advocate for exercise and eating right. You know, you, you had mentioned, you know, uh, those people on the island don't have fast food. Well, truck drivers do. And in fact, when we look at the average truck stop, they don't really have diners anymore. They have Popeyes and McDonald's and all the other stuff, gut grenades, rectum rockets, you know, fast food, it goes in fast, comes out fast. And it's really bad for you. You've seen the movie Super Size Me. Um, when the guy went in and he ate McDonald's three mm-hmm. days, three three meals a day for 30 days, and they were begging him to stop. His right. health went like real bad. So, you know, my suggestion would be, drivers, is definitely make sure you start eating healthy. I would personally, I would suggest cans of tuna. I would suggest, you know, chicken, you know, chopped chicken meat for sandwiches. I would even suggest, you know, more like veggie wraps, stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, Ruthann, if I was back on the road, a crock pot with a nice little piece of roast, some potatoes or some rice and some veggies, 
put that in 7 o'clock in the morning, by noon, you have a nice meal, home-cooked meal, not a fast food meal. What do you think? I agree 100%. There's a lot of, and there's some really good recipes out there for drivers that you can do in your truck. And I know we've talked to a few couples that were in the truck and, and the wife would make up really great meals. But even if you don't have someone in the tractor with you, you can make, you know, with a hot plate, a crock pot and a rice, uh, a little rice cooker, you can really make some great meals. And if you don't want to go through all that, you can get an, an air fryer. They have cookbooks that you can use. All that stuff is really awesome alternatives that you can do instead of eating at, you know, the subway or, you know, Pizza Hut or whatever is in these truck stops. And, and you know the convenience of, okay, you make a meal, but you make it big enough that, okay, for the next three days you have leftovers. You don't have to, you know, every day prepare this big meal while you're going down the road. So, you know, one or two meals a week could actually feed you for the week, you know, with, with reheating stuff with your microwave. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So let's. I want. I want to talk about the dangers, the danger part of the of trucking. Um, the because I said how dangerous is trucking? Mm-hmm. So dangerous to your health, yes. But I want to talk to you about the mishaps. Also, I've been reading up on, and I want to talk to you about that after we take this break, real quick. Okay. Okay. All right. If you're a driver looking for a new trucking job, check out NCI. NCI offers the following. New Kenworth T680s, competitive wages, solo team, and students welcome, plus a full benefit package for you and your family. Check them out today at 888-311-7076. That's 888-7076. And tell them Talk CDL sent you. Truck Parking Club is a network of instantly reservable daily and monthly truck parking locations throughout the U.S. Truck Parking Club helps connect truckers to truck parking locations throughout the U.S. via truckparkingclub.com. Our networks is made up of property owners that have locations adequate for truck parking to list on the platform. This includes trucking companies, storage companies, CDL schools, trailer leasing companies, real estate investors, truck parking operators, and more. Go to truckparkingclub.com today. Drivers, if you're looking for a local home everyday driving job, apply with Carter Lumber today. They have positions for Class A and Class B local drivers. They can take experienced drivers, students, and non-CDL drivers. With over 160 locations, chances are they have a position for you. So go to carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL and apply today. Again, that's carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. Thank you. Hey drivers, are you sick of watching the other drivers bypass the way station while you are held up going through yourself? Well, download DriveWise today at www.drivewise.com. That's D R I V E W Y Z E.com and start bypassing the scales yourself. If you're a small carrier, an owner-operator, or even a big fleet looking for something better, check out DriveWise today. And remember, there's no equipment, no transponders needed when you're using DriveWise. Check them out for a free download at www.drivewyze.com. All right, Ruth, and we're back. I wanted to give a shout out to our boy Ben. <laughs> I was, we had a blog going today, and some lady wrote, um, uh, we had wrote uh, a post about a driver that was killed, you know, this past week, and he had run in, up the back of another semi, but which was a sad story. But this lady wrote, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, I apologize. I wrote. Uh, we're, this is what our podcast is about this week, the dangers of trucking. And she writes in a comment, oh, you have a pod, we have a podcast here. Where can I find that? And, and I was like, 
okay, it's called Talk CDL Trucking Podcast, <laughs> right? The, the Facebook page. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's kind of cute. Though. Really, she's a nice lady. But so, but Ben writes, uh, yeah, look at the name. I mean, <laughs> she he goes, where have you been living under a rock? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we gave her the, the address and everything like that. So shout out to Ben for, you know, making a little joke on the page. And shout out to that lady that asked for the podcast. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. Um, <laughs> we truly appreciate it. Like, oh, I'm a star now. I'm on it. <laughs> uh, well, we, do, we, we appreciate all new, all the new fans, you know what I mean? Or listeners, whatever you want to call them. You know, I don't think people like to be called fans, but. I don't what, like the word fans. Yeah. F- did you ever see that movie fan, Fanatic or whatever it was with De Niro? Um, but anyways, that person's name. Why don't we give her a shout out too, if I can. Um, da, 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 da. Her name was Melissa Carlton. Melissa Carlton asked if we are a podcast. Yes, Talk CDL Trucking Par- Podcast is a podcast, Melissa. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for tuning in and, and listening to our show. We truly appreciate everybody. Ruthann, so we are back and we are talking about the dangers of trucking. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've covered these things over the years, but I looked up a few things just for the heck of it. This is just recent stuff. And check this out. These, these are just little dangers if not bad dangers. Um, Truck drivers experience nearly three times more injuries and deaths than any other occupation. And it says, and this number is only growing. So, so it's a statistic that is, is the worst for accidents and deaths is, is the trucking industry. Hmm. Um, Here's just a couple little uh, things I wrote here. It says trucker on side of road, robbed at knife point this happened this week right now this is this is the danger of being a trucker right it says motorist jacob falso was heading south on i-81 when he pulled onto a shoulder and stopped um in front of a tractor trailer broken down on the side of the road falso then ran up to the cab of the rig and broke the driver's side window and robbed the trucker while armed with a knife. Falso then attempted to steal the truck, but was unsuccessful. Police actually arrived on the scene and seen the guy with the knife. So the guy jumped back in his vehicle and they gave chase said he refused to stop. Officers pursued him. And during the pursuit, he collided with a FedEx truck and rammed two police vehicles. He was eventually taken into custody um, without further incident. So here's a trucker that was robbed at knife point just because who knows why the poor guy had to pull over. You know, truckers don't just usually pull over on the side of an interstate. Um, there's usually a problem or something going on. So there's there's a danger. Always, you know, where you deliver. I was talking to a, a couple truckers the other day in Chicago, and they said one of the jobs they hate doing is intermodal because the intermodal area in Chicago is like you're, it's like, you know, the ghetto. It's like where people are, are robbed a lot and there's a lot of crime, right? And so um, the truck drivers hate to go into these areas, but, but oftentimes truck drivers have to make deliveries in areas where crime is really super high. I mean, I've used to deliver in New York City in different areas, and, and you know, there really was high crime in these areas. Philly, um, Chicago, all these areas I used to deliver you know, you take a, sh- a risk when you're a trucker, so you can't kind of mm-hmm. can't blame a trucker when he doesn't want to run into the city. Right? No, I, I've heard it many times, so they don't want to go. I've recently heard that some of the most dangerous areas for trucking were Tulsa, Oklahoma, Memphis, Tennessee, Miami. Real, these are like really huge areas for truck jackings. Um, here's another one: um, Hernando, Mississippi. Trucker was killed um, by a four wheeler. A man uh, has been arrest- arrested and charged after a crash on I-55 in Mississippi left an, uh, another man dead. According to Hernando Police Department, um, HPD said that 37-year-old Matthew Nemochek, he's, he's from Wisconsin, Palmyro, Wisconsin, has been charged with uh, culpable negligent manslaughter. Uh, the truck driver, 40-year-old Milan Al- Alkovic of New York, died at the scene. Police said Nemochek was taken into 
uh, regional one in Memphis for his injuries, and then he was released to the police. Well, you know what he did? He mm-hmm. was he was uh, being chased by the police and ended up flying across the median and head on in. He did a header into this poor trucker, into Milan Alkovic, and, and the trucker was killed. This guy's in a four-wheel. He's in like a Dodge Ram pickup, right? And he and he crosses over the median to try to get away and and smashes into a truck driver. How the how the pickup truck guy lived and the trucker died is crazy the way that must have ended up. But there's another one. Just the dangers. You're a truck driver, right? You're just making a living. That's all that guy was doing. He was driving down the road, probably, you know, making a living for his family. He was 40, so he probably had kids, young kids. Mm-hmm. And now these poor kids and the wife. They're going to be, you know, fatherless because some schmuck, you know, was driving like a derelict and and ends up killing the, the working guy. See, when you were first telling me, I thought, you know, maybe he was outside his tractor checking something or no. I didn't I didn't because I couldn't figure how could he like you said, how can a four wheeler do something like that? Yeah, it's crazy. So here's another one. Trucker. I'm just giving you some examples of how. Truckers have a huge danger. This is a dangerous job. Trucker falls uh, from flatbed trailer. A 57-year-old uh, long-haul semi-truck driver died after he fell to the ground while tarping a flatbed trailer. He had been employed by a flatbed cargo hauling business for 13 years. He'd been with the same company for 13 years. It was his first day back at work after having spent a month recovering from a back sprain injury caused by a previous traffic collision. So he had been in an accident. He had been off for a month. His first day back on the job, it it says the weather was sunny and dry. Um, He had picked up a load of sheet aluminum wrapped in plastic from a nearby rolling mill. And then he came back to the employer's yard to tarp it. It said, and uh, a mechanic uh, had uh, taken a forklift, put the tarp. Because common thing for uh, flatbedders is if it's a big, heavy tarp, the forklift will put it up on the truck for the guy to roll it out. It's a lot easier than trying to get it up there by yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. So the forklift guy, he puts the tarp up he drives away right and then uh, a worker uh, drove into the yard and noticed that the driver was laying on the ground unresponsive and bleeding on the ground Um, first responders arrived at the scene Uh, uh, they could not revive the guy and he was pronounced dead and investigation showed that it was traumatic head injury caused by the fall and then it said investigators presumed from physical evidence that the driver had climbed on top of the trailer, placed the tarps on the front and rear end, and at some point, some point afterwards fell 51 inches. 51 inches is just a little over four feet. But the way you fall, you're going to... He, I guess he must have fell and hit his head and literally was killed, you know, just... A freak of nature. Just imagine that, getting the phone call. Your, your wife gets a phone call. You know, that's why women and people that are at home, they worry about these truck drivers because these guys, literally, there's so many. It's not just getting into a wreck and rolling over. There's so many other things that can kill you out there on the road. Yeah, I mean, if he was in an accident already and his back was bothering him, he probably was trying to be, you know, a little bit more tempered with, with how he was moving than what he normally did. And you don't know, his foot could have gotten stuck somehow. And when he fell over, he went head first and smashed it, you know? Yeah. And as a truck driver, you know, a lot of, you know, the good truck drivers, they're going to work even in pain. Mm -hmm. So here's a guy coming back from a a, a back injury and he's tarping a load and then he falls and dies. It's just a sad story. Here's another one. Truck driver killed when fencing falls off trailer. It said um, a 53-year-old truck driver was fatally struck when, a f- when fence pipes fell from a flatbed tri- uh, trailer, the truck driver who was employed by a freight company was delivering fence pipes um, at a fence sales company and an in- that when the incident occurred while unloading. Here, I'll give you the gist of it. Uh, the, the guy that was out there unloading the guy, right, and he was taking these bundles of pipe off, 
and he was taken. It said bundle number five. He he was taking that off when he noticed bundle number six fell to the other side. So he's on the one side of the trailer, and the uh, a bundle of pipe rolled off the other side. Well, come to find out after the guy you know dry, you know takes the his stack back and and drops it off when he turns around there he notices the truck drivers underneath the 1400 pound bundle of pipe that's horrible exactly i mean all of it's horrible i'm just every saying, single thing of it but oh my gosh and so now the truck driver was what in what they call the danger zone you know but you know he might have just been so complacent and used to walking around and apparently he was on the other side. The The forklift driver never seen him, and the pipes crushed the trucker to death. So, you know, these are just so many things that a truck driver faces um, when, you know, you know, doing his job just out in the road. One last thing I wrote. It says, uh, a truck driver, now this guy was killed on the side of the road uh, by a, a drunk so now this guy had gotten out and he was at the back of his trailer. I don't know why he was at the back of his trailer. Maybe it was flatbed. Maybe it was van. Maybe the guy was just doing a walk around. I don't know. But it said a truck driver um, is dead after being hit by an alleged drunk driver overnight. Um, Gene Culp, 51 years of age, of Red Creek, pulled his tractor trailer over on the side of the road uh, in Lexington Avenue and Curley Street around 1 a.m. Tuesday, according to police, presumably to do a mechanical, you know, t- it's it says to do a mechanical issue. Should have said to fix. Um, police said Jeff Eden, 53, was westbound on Lexington Avenue when his vehicle struck Culp, who was at the back of the tractor trailer, pinning Culp between the two vehicles and killing him so you know what i mean drivers it's so it's so it's not like i said it's not just the danger but one of the dangers that we see a truck driver faces and this may be why truckers you know are really hard on four-wheel drivers because a lot of these four-wheelers are cause they cause the death of the truck driver now granted you know, maybe there's a couple cases where the truck driver shouldn't put himself in the danger zones also. So my advice would be, you know, exercise for the um, the health part. The health part portion of it. Eat right. Definitely exercise right then. Mm-hmm. And get a gun. You know, I would I would I really I'm a big advocate, you know, for the second uh, mm-hmm. second amendment. Um, you know, obviously you want to check with your company to make sure, but personally, if it's me, I'm carrying a gun because the last thing I'm going to do is be robbed at knife point, Ruthann. I mean, you, I mm-hmm. see a guy smashing my window. He's eating a bullet. I'm going to tell you that right now. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the poor guy, I mean, it might have been just, he might have been a very old trucker too, you know. You don't know. Uh, you know, a, or just a, a weak guy. Uh, it just, doesn't matter. Exactly. It's, you know, you definitely need to protect yourself out there, drivers. I mean, just for no what? Who the hell just pulls over on the side of the road and decides, I think I'll rob that trucker. Right? I need money. Oh, there's a guy right there. Let me rob him real quick. That sounds like a guy that was desperately looking for drugs or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you're looking for a random person to rob and and you see truckers are in random places that's what i said before you guy you get a guy that's delivering in the city somewhere right you get a guy delivering near a rail yard or or near uh, abandoned buildings near a poor side of the town i told you before when when i was uh deli- when i was driving for Lentz, uh my helper and i one time we were delivering right by a police station and there was people standing there smoking weed right by the police station. This was before weed was il- was legal. And and there he was, these people just standing around, you know, all uh, boarded up buildings and there we were delivering to a bakery and you just, you never know. Uh, truck drivers are really at risk big time for health issues and for getting robbed or getting killed. And then, you know, what's on top of that, Ruth, and we haven't even talked about weather related things, you know, uh, you know, here we are uh, approaching winter mm-hmm. and, and these guys are going to be up North and you know, damn well, how many times has a driver driving and it's 33 degrees 
and there's mist out, and all of a sudden the temperature drops by two degrees, and you're on black ice. That's a great. I agree. You yeah. know. So my advice to all you drivers, and I mean this sincerely, guys, proceed with caution, protect yourself, and really, truly, you know, start respecting your your body on the inside. Eat a little better for yourself, because I'm telling you right now, the McDonald's and the Burger Kings and and the Wendy's, they really aren't good for you. No, it's going to catch up to you. Yeah, the fast food isn't good for you, but I'll tell you what, four-wheelers aren't good for you either, it seems like, Ruth. There's... Evidently, it's just, there's a lot of stuff that's just really, you just got to, like you said, guard yourself, but you're going to have to really get, be aware, be aware. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, we want to see our brothers and sisters out there on the road, come home safely. You know, I always tell drivers, you know, the most important load you deliver is yourself when you're on your way home. Okay. That's by far more important. And, and just remember one thing, drivers, you guys are the captain of the ship. Mm -hmm. I I ran my truck that way. And I want to tell you something. You definitely are the captain of your ship. If it's, if it's really bad weather, you know what, pull in somewhere. And if the load's late and you get fired, guess what? At least you're an alive guy that got fired. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Ruth Ann, if you're tired, I don't care if you already had your 10 hour break and somehow your, your, your eyes are nodding off because Ruth Ann, that's another thing. Truck drivers run the risk of with danger is when they're out there driving at three, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, You, 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 that's, we're not really built to be up at that time of the night. It's just natural. The natural man sleeps at those hours. Right. No, exactly. The, the way the, the, the cycle of the moon goes around, that's the human body is used to sleeping. I mean, even animals, that's when they usually go to sleep. It's very rare that you have ones that are, you know, you have nocturnal animals, but you have, it's very rare to have certain humans that are able to be up at night. You know, we do have them, you know. So one last pe- one last time, my advice, exercise, eat right, carry a gun, and be vigilant. And what I mean by vigilant, Ruthann, is before you unlock your truck and you get out, look around. Look and see if somebody's kept is eyeballing you you don't know look above you there's places in the city where you know there's something about to fall off a scaffolding or something or off of a building look around you know know your surroundings know where you gotta walk okay do all that and i promise you you'll be safer right then moving on moving on moving on so we're thin. Uh, you know, I was a couple, uh, just a mention real quick. It's not a good mention. Um, Meadowlark Transport, which I knew who they were. Uh, they had uh, like 270 some drivers just went out of business this past week. And they are victim number 15,000 plus because since the very first of the year, over 15,000 trucking companies, I think we mentioned this, have gone out of business. And that's not to mention the 30,000 truckers that are out of a job just with yellow, but I'm talking 15,000 plus more additional trucking companies, many of them being small, but some of them we've read about some of these companies that are 50 to 150 trucks going out of business. And that's going to keep going for a while. Um, I was talking to a couple of trucking companies the other day and they said, you know, this is a trend that is not only going to happen, but has to happen because, you know, uh, when the pandemic came in, the rates were gigantic. People were making millions and everybody that was greedy came in and bought trucks and, and decided to be a trucking company. Well, that that's, there's not enough freight for the amount of companies that came in and therefore the industry is weeding itself out. The sharks are eating the sharks, however you want to word it. Mm -hmm. Survival of the fittest. Okay. But companies that, that, that don't have customers, companies that don't have freight, companies that are strictly on broker loads, most of them right now are failing fast. And it's, it's, it's really making room for the trucking companies and it's going to, you know, uh, free enterprise. Okay. Is really what that's called. You know, it's, you you work, you manage, and you either profit or you go out of business. And Meadowlark, they're out. Oh, I'm s- sorry know. to hear them going out of business. I hate hearing about a company going out of business. Me too. You know, sometimes it's it's like you said, someone you know the bigger shark came in and, and just swallowed them up because they were just little others. You know, poor um, business sense where they didn't understand how to 
you know, properly run the business in that sense. Or other times it's because the person that they had in charge knew what they were doing, but they did it, did it in a greedy, I'm going to do it my way and, and took the business down from them. I just hate, hear, I hate hearing about it. It's sad. I agree. But anyways, just the, like I said, if you're a trucking company that's hurting, my suggestion would be maybe try to find a buyer for your company before you end up having to file bankruptcy. That's true. Because there's a lot of companies that like buying up companies. So a lot of times if you have good equipment and you have a full fleet of drivers, which is the hard thing for trucking companies to get, you know, you're better off. Look, look for a buyer. Mm-hmm. Maybe somebody can purchase you or even merge you in and help you. But if you're if you're on the downswing, you might want to start thinking before you're out, Ruthann, moving on. Moving on. So, Ruthann, I read an article um, in Transport Topics, and it's an interesting article. just want to kind of uh, mention this because it's an interesting topic. It says um, the uh, truck drivers who failed drug screens, where are they today, it asks. And uh, really the answer is a lot of them are out of the industry. Mm -hmm. especially in the bad times right now, because right now the drivers that are finding it harder to get employment are the guys that have failed drug screens. It says the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration says its drug and alcohol clearinghouse is having the intended effect of taking large numbers of drivers caught using drugs off the highway. However, a persistent concern is that 146,000 drivers remain prohibited driving status after failing their drug tests. Most are not enrolled in the required return to duty agency process according to the FMCSA and seem to be exiting the profession in the midst of a driver shortage despite a recent illuminating research report by the American Transportation Research Institute that focused on driver marijuana test failures FMCSA said it has had no research of its own yet to explain why the large majority of drivers who test positive for at least one of the 14 substances tested appear to be moving to what they view to greener pastures. And, you know, it it just goes on to give more numbers. Um, you, You know, the bottom line is what it was really talking about a lot is a lot of these drivers, and I wanted to mention this, Ruth Ann, a lot of these drivers that fail the drug screen, which, you know, to be honest with you, if you're going to be doing drugs and driving an 80,000 pound rig, I think your ass should be out of trucking, really, honestly, get. I mean, I agree. I even think anybody that, that's that's failing a drug screen or getting a DUI while he has a CDL probably should have a CDL yank for life. That's just my opinion of it. Because to me, that's like a, uh, your, it's like your degree, your, your diploma. It's like a certificate. It's, it's, it's saying, hey, I have a profession and this is what I'm going to do with it. And you already know by doing you know drugs or drinking you already know that um there's a danger to that first off and you already know that you're taking the chance on Mm -hmm. you know going in the sap program the substance abuse program but one of the things that i have noticed that trucking companies are doing ruth ann to these truck drivers okay is on the return to duty um program they have to be First off, when a truck driver fails a drug screen, he has to take what's called the SAP, the Substance Abuse Program. Most people know that. So they have to have an officer that puts them through a little course and then certifies them good to be able to be able to enter back in to uh, the CDL program. A lot of, some trucking companies don't even know the law that there has to be what's called a return to duty drug screen. Okay, so an initial drug screen to get these guys back in. And then... They have to do six, are you ready, random watched drug screens. And here's where trucking, the the dirty, the bad trucking companies, what they're doing is they're hiring these guys back into the industry. Some of them are. Mm -hmm. Most are not. But if they are hiring them, what they're doing is they're holding them hostage by not doing the six return to duty statuses. Because I've talked to a lot of trucking companies and, and a lot of trucking companies say, we will look at a driver um, if he's already completed the SAP and did the six random return to duty drug screens that you know that they have to do their first year. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the SAP provider has to provide the trucking company with those random dates. The truck driver can't 
they cannot know about it. But the problem is a lot of SAP programmers are not pro providing that date, which they should be if you're a SAP provider. You know you should be doing this for the, the guy. But then on top of that, you have this these trucking companies that are a lot of them are outlaw companies. They refuse to give these guys the six tests. You know why? Because they know if I if I don't give them the tests and I get them all certified back in, I can keep this guy for a year or two and I don't have to worry about losing a driver. So they're kind of holding these guys hostage, which is, you know, I understand feeling the drug screen is a bad thing. And I like I said, my stance on it, these guys shouldn't even be driving. But to be honest with you, okay, to be honest with you, and I do believe in second chances, but to be honest with you, okay, a trucking company should should lose they should be fined big time or shut down or whatever if they're going to break the rules to hold a guy hostage like that right what are you telling what are you telling people about what kind of company you are if you're going to actually be that mean and dishonorable that you're going to mess with i mean this this driver he's depending on you to do what's right so that he could return to duty and you as a company are doing what's completely wrong and unethical because you want to keep them there longer. Think about it. What kind of company are you if you're going to be doing that? Yeah, it's a dirtbag company. But but guys, like I'm saying, I do believe in second chances, but I really, honestly, I'm really against anybody smoking weed, uh, doing narcotics, or drinking alcohol and driving an 80,000 pound vehicle down the road and killing my family. Okay, I'm going to tell you that right it's like, now. It's like, would you want a doctor? Would you want your surgeon to be under the influence? I was talking to a company the other day. You know what he said? He said, Troy, would you want your airline pilot to be stoned? <laughs> and the answer is hell no. You know, so why would you want an 80,000-pound trucker to be not all about his wits? So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'll probably get a few emails on how... Um, drivers can drive more, you know, efficient when they're <laughs> on, on weed. They're, they're I, more I, alert. <laughs> I can handle, I mean, it's so funny when you I've hear. Had, I've heard the argument. I know. When you hear the excuses, believe me, we've heard them all. There's always going to be the person. You're always going to think there's nothing wrong with you because you want to find the reasoning for you to be able to do what you want to do. Yeah. It's okay. I can drive fine. So. Let me, I'm going to say, this is, this is pretty much my podcast for the week, Ruth Ann. Um, we're going to get to your um, part of the show here in a second. But, you know, it's just, so let me just add to the advice between exercise, eat right, get a gun, okay, and be vigilant. And my last piece of advice is uh, don't do drugs or drink while you're driving a tractor trailer. Hello. Now, I will say this, though, Ruth Ann, I will say this in defense of the weed smokers. I'm serious, because it's now legal, I think, in like 20 states. Yeah, it just if, makes it difficult it, for some of them. Well, I know it's not legal, according to the FMCSA, mm -hmm. but if you're at home on your own home time and you smoke a joint, I'm just saying, I'm, I, you know, it's, to me, it's no different than getting drunk, all right? If, if you do that, all right, in the privacy of your own legal home, all right, when you go back on the road, say, a week later or whatever... And then you test positive, but you're not stoned right. but because the, the drug is in your, in your body. You do know better that it's, that you're going to get in trouble if you get caught. But I don't believe that that guy's a danger. If it's a week later, right. they, they, they need to come up with a drug test that shows that this, you know, it's like an alcohol test after seven or eight hours. I think that they these guys are legal to drive after right. drinking. a beer. Oh, I agree with you there because, right. you know, let's put it this way. A driver comes home. You know, we're not, we're not fools. We know what, what, what weed does to you. And you just came off of working a month or three weeks or whatever it is, six weeks. And you're, you, sometimes it's very hard after driving all that to get to that unwind point so you could start relaxing. So you want to smoke a joint. You want to do something like that. I don't think there's an issue with that if that's what you want to do to calm yourself down so you could start relaxing you know, and you have to go to work again in a week. I think that's that's your personal preference. I don't see that this should be an issue. What I see an issue with is if you're doing it while you're driving and you're 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 staying stoned. That's where the issue is. Ruth Dan's a hippie. I'm not a hippie. I'm just kidding. I'm a product of being. A, <laughs> I'm a product of a hippie. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, in all honesty, like I said, if it's legal, it 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 is what it is. But. It, 
you guys just got to keep remember one thing. It is not legal at all to be in your system at all, even if you're not stoned. And that is the, that is the flip side of the argument, Ruth Ann. But mm-hmm. we'll leave it at that for the experts to hopefully iron out in the future. Moving on, Ruth Ann, what do you got Moving for us on. today? Louisiana. Louisiana, the yeah. Cajun country, huh? So what do you got in Louisiana? In St. Francisville, Louisiana, there is a prison rodeo. And the prison rodeo has been open to the public for 42 years. It is the Anglo State Penitentiary. I can just see a bunch of truckers pulling up to the prison. We're here for the rodeo. Well, you know what? I'm actually, I was looking at the pictures that they provided. I'm I'm thinking to myself, you know, if you're out doing nothing, well, not nothing, but, you know, you're stuck and you want to do something, this seemed like it would be something that would be interesting to do. The rodeo takes place on Sundays in October and one weekend in April. So it's not like it's a continual thing. So it's something that you, you know, if you're having the chance to go by there, it would be something that would be, you know, fun to do, I would say. You know, All right, see a couple that. people get thrown off the, the bull and bruised up. Why not? Uh, absolutely. Uh, people love rodeos. So. All right. Is that that's so that's Louisiana, huh? Yeah, Louisiana was aside from everything and everything in in New Orleans that we all know about. That was just something different. You know, the other thing you can do with with in Louisiana, if you're laid over somewhere near the swamps or the water, you could always literally look for a, a boat a boat guide or or an airboat ride and going into the swamps. They have all kind of things like that going on in Louisiana. So next time you're going to be laid over in Louisiana, check out the swamps. I'm serious. It's some good stuff you can do. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was a couple other ones like that and little stuff, but, you know. All right, moving on. You got the word of the day? I do, I do. Word genius, word of the day. Word genius makes us smarter. Trove. Let's hear that again. Trove. One more time. Trove. Trove? Trove. Spell. T-R-O-V as in Victor, E. Trove. And what is, I, I think I've actually heard of a trove before. What does it mean? It is a store of valuable or delightful things. Oh, like when you say, oh, it's just a trove of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, okay. So so the word trove, because people use that, like they'll say, oh, man, it's just a trove of boxes or something like that. What, right, but they're using it incorrectly. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like I've always used it in different ways. So what's the actual definition again? A store of val- valuable or delightful things. Now here's the sentences. And this is where you'll hear like you were just saying, the kids were pretending to be pirates on a hunt for the secret treasure trove. Oh yeah. Treasure trove. Yeah. Right. His wine cellar was a trove of rare, rare vintages. So that's where it's the, the valuable things is the rare vintages of the wine. And of course the delightful things would have been the treasure trove. You know, it's a, that's actually a pretty good word for for you to bring on today because, you know, it's it's an actual word people have been using, like you said, but incorrectly. Yeah. That yeah. is so cool. All right. Thank you, by the way. You're welcome. All right. We're out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord. Oh, hey, hey stay one second. Okay. Um, I want to keep mentioning the Louisville Truck Show. Yeah, we forgot to say that. Yeah, we're going to be at the Louisville Truck Show, um, make plans to be their drivers and stop in and say hi to us. And we are going to be at the Fort Lauderdale Truck Show mm-hmm. also. So make plans to stop in there in February and say hi to Talk CDL. And that's all I got, Ruth Ann. So, again, we're out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.